I noticed immediately is that we're asking Hashem to mabi to makshiv, which is interesting, right? Like you're, you know, you're listening with kol tekiyasenu. So what does it mean that we want you to be mabit? You know, that we want you to look at us as we're as we're blowing the shofar, as we're saying these tefillot. It's a interesting idea. I mean, uh, you know, it goes back a little bit to our experience at Harsinai, the full sensory mm. experience. I had the same reaction <laughs> and the, the sense that uh, naturally we assume we're asking God to heed the sound of the shofar, but that looking somehow says that when we utter a sound, they don't just enter God's ear, so to speak, but it arouses God's facial attention. At the beginning that I read is like the whooshing, <laughs> it's like maybe not even words at all, but Dafka, the breath or the Ooh, like blowing the that you put through the show uh-huh. maybe this is not about the words at all but really focusing purely on the sounds that are that are occurring through the phrase is aresha panim which is actually facial non-verbal expression mm. not what we're actually saying so i'm wondering again if that difference between what are we saying and what deeply are we not saying but but i think that's like like we want what we do to be pleasing to god how do we find pleasure in a life of serving God? Mm-hmm. How do we find pleasure? You know, not just duty, mm-hmm. right? How do we make Torah something joyous and pleasurable? And mm-hmm. so to me, that's, I think, what we, we could all use a little more joy in our lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, that's the feeling we make every day. Like, right. Let this life, right. let us mm-hmm. be able to find joy in it. We could even read that here a little homiletically as Arashat Sabatino Yerav, for us, Lefanecha in front of you, mm-hmm. God. Like, mm-hmm. let, we're asking, of course, it to be. Re- responded to by God and pleasing in front of God, but we also want it for ourselves to be a meaningful, mm. evocative mm. experience. Looking inside ourselves and maybe looking out around the kahal at others that we're responding even as we're asking God and, and it be pleasing to us, experientially mm. meaningful for us even as we ask it to be that in front of God. Beautiful. The Seder Zichron Otinu, and I don't know if there's other times where we get the the possessive of the Zichron. Typically, mm. the Psukim are about oh, God's remembrance, oh, so God's nice. memories, and here it becomes like about our memories or like the things we remember. And I think, you know, on Yom Hadin is this opportunity a little bit to start reflecting on your previous on the previous year, your memories of the year, mm. or your memories of previous Rosh Hashanahs. The Malchiot Zichronot and Shofrot in Areshet Svatenu Kel Ram Benisa certainly evokes. God's majesty and a little bit different than the Rachamim. I would very much like to connect the Rachamim to the Seder Zichrono. Seder Zichrono to me mm. is always the part of the, this particular, the bracha that, that evokes um, the greatest, on some level, the greatest fear, but also the greatest sense of really needing God's mm-hmm. Rachamim if God is El And of course, we have the Likolt Kiyotenu. So we've brought in the various themes into. Uh, in, into the Areshat Svatim. Mm.